So this video is aimed at AS AQA chemistry for the new spec. In this video we're going to look at um, some basic stuff really. It's basically a revision of GCSE. So protons, neutrons and electrons, relative mass, relative charge, etc. of them. And also looking at how our knowledge and understanding of atomic structure has evolved over time. So here is a diagram showing the basic structure of an atom. You can see you've got the nucleus in the centre. That's where the protons and the neutrons can be found. And around in shells we have the electrons. You can see the electrons have a negative charge, the protons have a positive charge, and the neutrons have a neutral charge. Here we've got two atoms of different elements. So we've got lithium and carbon. The blue dots are meant to represent protons, so you can see lithium has three protons. That's what defines lithium, the number of protons. This one has six protons, therefore it's carbon. If this loses protons or gains protons, it is no longer carbon. It is the number of protons that defines what the element is. Both of them could lose or gain electrons and they would still be lithium. So if it's, if it's gains an electron, it's still lithium. It's just a positive a negative ion. And if it gains neutrons, it's just an isotope of lithium. So it is the protons that define it. So this table looks at the protons, neutrons, electrons. And we're looking at their relative mass. So not the actual mass, the relative mass and the relative charge. Okay, so have a go at doing it yourself if you can. Uh, let's have a look. So proton has got a relative mass of 1. Neutron has got a relative mass of 1, and an electron has got a relative mass of 1 over 1840. So you can see that the electron is a lot smaller than the neutron and the proton. If we look at charge, we can see that the proton has one positive charge, the neutron is neutral, and the electron has a one negative charge. In the previous slide, you'll be expected to remember the relative mass and relative charge. You're not expected to remember the real mass and the real charge, but here they are for interest. So you can see the proton is 1.673 times 10 to the minus 27 kilos. That's how much a proton, how much how mass is a pro for a proton. You can see a, a neutron is pretty much similar, a tiny bit heavier, but pretty much similar. And we can see how the mass of the electron is much smaller, so 9 0.109 times 10 to the minus 30. We can see how the charge, the actual charge of the proton is positive 1.6 and the electron is minus 1.6 but exactly the same and you can see how neutrons have a neutral, have no charge in coulombs. So two key terms you need to know about, mass number and atomic number. So mass number, total number of protons and neutrons. So you just add up the protons and the neutrons and you get the mass number. So, for example, um, over here we've got carbon, it's got six protons, and this particular isotope of carbon has six neutrons, so it's got a mass number of 12. Atomic number, that's just the number of protons. So, that we count for carbon, it's six, so carbon has got an atomic number of six, also known as the proton number. And for a neutral atom, for a neutral atom, the number of protons is going to equal the number of electrons. So as this carbon atom is neutral, if it's got six protons, it's going to have six electrons. Otherwise, it wouldn't be neutral. If it had less electrons or more electrons, it would have a charge, and it wouldn't be neutral. So this is the periodic table. You'll have this with you in all your exams. If you look at uh, boron, you can see there's two numbers. The smaller number is the atomic number, or proton number. So number of protons. The larger number is the relative atomic mass. You can see the staircase running down here. To the left of the staircase, these guys are all metals. To the right, these are non-metals. The metals over here generally form positive ions. So you can see here the lithium, sodium, potassium, they're all in group one. They form one positive ion, so they lose one electron. Over here, you can see in group seven, they want to gain one electron, so they form one negative ion. The exception to the metal non metal divide is hydrogen, which is, of course, a non metal. Okay, so if you look at the top of the periodic table, you can see numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 8, or 0. Uh, so these are the group numbers. Um, the group numbers tell you how many electrons are in the outermost shell. So, for example, boron is in group 3, so it has 3 electrons in its outermost shell. 
The numbers down the side, one, two, three, are here. So these are the period numbers. These tell you the number of shells. So if you look at strontium, strontium is in period five, so it's got five electron shells. It's also got two electrons in its outermost shell, or valence shell. Getting your head around how small the atom actually is is really quite an interesting subject. I really advise you watching this video. You can find it on YouTube. It's called Just How Small Is an Atom by Jonathan Bergman. Uh, I'll put a link in, at the bottom of this video. So we're going to briefly talk about the history of ideas about the atom. So this is a picture of uh, Democritus from ancient Greece in around 460 BC. So he had the idea that if you got a bit of cheese and you kept cutting it in half again and again and again, eventually you'd lead to a particle that you couldn't cut in half anymore, and this would be the atom. So more recently, in 1803, we had John Dalton's um, atomic theory. So um, he, he sort of hypothesized that matter is made up of atoms. These atoms are indestructible. They can't be broken down into pieces. Uh, so he said that the atoms of a particular element are identical to each other and different from other atoms. And he discussed how atoms can be rearranged in chemical reactions and how compounds are formed when two or more different kinds of atoms are joined together. In 1896, J.J. Uh, Thompson discovered the electron, and that helped um, develop this plum pudding model uh, of, a, of the atom. It showed the electrons being in fixed locations in this sort of sea of positive charge. So the electrons were like plums in a pudding. So in 1911, Ernest Rutherford uh, did some experiments and he discovered that actually the protons and neutrons weren't just randomly placed around, they were actually in the centre. Uh, he was bombarding um, the atom with alpha particles and if the sort of protons had been in random locations, then they would have bounced off in different random locations, but they, it didn't. There was this clear pattern showing that there's this solid mass only in the very, very centre of the atom. And that brings us to now. So right now we're looking at uh, that actually the protons, neutrons can be broken up even further and that's what CERN's now doing in Geneva. So what keeps us all together? So protons and neutrons are held together by strong nuclear forces. These were very, very strong forces. The electrons, however, are kept in their shells by the electrostatic forces between themselves and the protons. So that's because the electrons are negatively charged, the protons are positively charged. So whenever you have negative and positive things, you get electrostatic attraction. So these are some questions from January 2013. So have a go at these questions, pause the video. So mass, the mass number is simply the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Uh, for this question, you simply uh, need to work out the number of protons. So you look at the mass number of 68. So you minus the number of neutrons, 38. So that gives you 30 protons. Look up on the periodic table the element that has 30 protons, and it's zinc. Okay, so this question asks for the number of protons in this rubidium isotope. Now, the number of protons is always going to be the same for an element. If it had more protons, it would not be the same element. So if you look up on the periodic table, you can see rubidium has 37 protons. So that's whatever isotope of rubidium is always going to have 37 protons. To work out the number of neutrons, you just take the mass number there, 85, minus the number of protons, and it will give you 48, which is the number of neutrons. So if you pause the video now and work out the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons for these atoms and these ions. So there's carbon, there's hydrogen, here's sodium. So sodium, you can see it's got one less electron because it's a positive ion. So it's lost a negative electron. Then we can see fluorine. See, fluorine has got a negative, a one negative charge, so that means it's gained an electron. This uh, nitrogen ion has gained three electrons. So there you see the extra three. And here is uh, manganese, and you can see that it's lost seven electrons. I suggest uh, going checking out this website, um, alevelchemistry.co.uk. Uh, it's got some really great um, sort of exercise sheets, and it's a good one on atomic structure for the practice of stuff we just learned.
So go onto the website, select AUA, select AS Chemistry, find Unit 1, 3.11 Atomic Structure. So this is on isotopes. So isotopes are atoms of the same element with a different atomic mass. So here's an example. These are all isotopes of lithium. You can see they've all got the same atomic number, 3. If they didn't, they would no longer be lithium. If they added a proton, they wouldn't be lithium anymore. And you can see they've got a different number of neutrons. Okay, so I've told you that the mass number is the number of protons and the number of neutrons. So, uh, and you've probably been told before that the mass number is on the periodic table is this number, the big number. So the little number is the number of protons, the atomic number. But the number on the periodic tables, it's not actually the mass number because, I mean, how could you have 35.5? How could you have half? That would mean there's... If a proton has a mass of 1 and a neutron has a relative mass of 1, that means you've got half a proton, half a neutron. You can't have that situation. Um, so this isn't actually the mass number. It's what's called the relative atomic mass. It's given the symbol capital A, little r, and it's got a rather long um, definition that you need to learn, which is here. So the relative atomic mass is the weighted average mass of all the isotopes of an element relative to 1 12th the mass of one atom of carbon 12. The formatting's messed up a bit here. That 12 is meant to be um, superscript, so small, and to the top left of the carbon there. Now, AQA does accept slightly different versions of this definition, but personally, I think this is sort of the, the one which explains it the best. Um, so the way to learn these rather long definitions is just simply um, cover it up, write it out, cover it up, write it out. Just keep doing that for about 10 minutes and you'll probably have it. And then remember to do that again a couple of days later. And if you keep doing that for a few days, you'll have it, no problem. Okay, so um, this is an example. Here's chlorine. So chlorine, right? In the real world, in, in, on Earth, because it's different on other planets, on Earth, we have uh, two main um, isotopes for chlorine. They are chlorine-35 and chlorine-37. So chlorine-37 is slightly heavier. It has two extra neutrons. Okay, so you think, right, well, the average of 35 and 37, that's 36. So hang on a minute. Why is the relative atomic mass 35.5? Why is it not 36? Well, what we do is we also take into account the abundance. So you can see that... There it's, it's three times more likely that we have chlorine-35. So this, is one, this one is more abundant, whereas chlorine-37 is more rare. So we take the abundance into account when we're working out the relative atomic mass. And that's why I use the word weighted average. It's not the average mass. The average mass of 35 and 37 would be 36. But the weighted average mass is 35.5. So to work out the relative atomic mass, or... AR, what you do is you times the mass by the abundance. So we've got 35 times 3. And then you plus the other isotopes. So in this case, we've just got two isotopes. So it becomes 37, that's the mass of that chlorine, times the abundance, 1. And then you divide it by the total abundance. So we've got 3 of that and 1 of that, so it equals 4. So if you put that into a calculator, it comes out as 35.5, which is your relative atomic mass. So hopefully that's covered the first few points. We've looked at uh, protons, neutrons, and electrons. We've looked at relative mass, relative charge of them. And we've looked at the understanding of the atomic structure as evolved. We've also looked at working out relative atomic mass.